Here we have section 1.2, solving a distance rate time problem using a linear equation. Now before we continue, we need to know the distance rate time relationship. And um, distance can be calculated by taking your rate times your time. Okay, and so we'll use this information. Now you can rewrite this equation in other ways by solving for certain variables. So if I were to divide both sides by R, I would then get the relationship that T equals D over R. Or if I chose to divide both sides by T, then I would get the relationship that R equals D over T, okay? So depending on the scenario, I will have to choose which of these three forms of the relationship I should use, okay? And that all depends on the information that they have given me. So what I like to do is I like to just create a box and I go ahead and I input my information in here. So I'm going to have my... Um, I guess it's not exactly even, but my distance, my rate, and my time. And then normally they give you two different scenarios, and I like to label my scenarios over here on the side. Now, it says two trains leave stations that are 288 miles apart. So that means that if I have train station number one over here and train station number two over there, the distance between them is 288 miles, okay? I am a picture person, so I do like to draw images if I can, um, so that the problem makes sense to me. Now, um, it also says that they are traveling at the same time towards each other. So you've got one train going in this direction, and then you've got the other train going in that direction. Okay, and they do leave at the same time. So whatever this time is and whatever that time is, we know that they're going to be equivalent to each other. Now, it says one train travels 90 miles per hour while the other train travels at 70 miles per hour. So we'll call this train one We'll call this train two because they didn't give me any other um, identifying information. They just said one train and the other train, right? So one of them, we're gonna say that the rate is 90 miles per hour and the other one we're gonna say is 70 miles per hour since that's exactly the information that they've given me. Now the next thing says, how long will it take for the two trains to meet? Okay. So I don't know anything about their distance. Well, I do, and I do know something about their time. All I know about their time is that their time is equivalent, okay? Since I do have some extra information about the distance, um, we know that the distance of train one and the distance of train two, if they're both going in this direction and then they meet, that means that the distance of train one plus the distance of train two should equal this 288 miles. So then um, what we need to know is we need to know the expression to use for this distance and the expression to use for this distance. So that means I need to fill in these two boxes. So what formula do I need to figure out what D is? This would be the formula that I need to figure out what D is. Um, so then therefore I need to fill in this with something, okay? And since the time is unknown, I'm just going to use X for the time. And I used X for the top and the bottom because it did tell me that they, they traveled at the same time, okay? So those values should be equivalent to each other. If I want to figure out what goes in the box for D, I would just do the rate times the time. So here I get 90x, here I get 70x. 
And then now I have an expression for the time for the first train is 90x. And I have an expression for the time for the second train, which is 70x. And then if I combine my like terms, I get 160x. And if I divide by 160 on both sides, I get, oops, 1.8. So since it was miles per hour, right? Miles per hour, that means this is going to be in hours because it is considered our time. Our distance would be in miles, our rate is in miles per hour, and then our time is in hours, okay? So my answer here would be, how long will it take for the two trains to meet? It will take 1.8 hours for those two trains to meet, okay? So let's go ahead and go on to another kind of example, which is a different scenario. So none of the scenarios that you get are gonna be exactly the same. So you really do need to learn how to set up that box so that you can uh, work on the problem. So let's see what this is gonna look like for this one. I can't possibly go over every single one. I mean, there's probably like 30 iterations. So, um, all I can do is just try to help you work out a couple and then hopefully you start to learn to use this chart um, to make things make sense. It's a lot more complicated if you don't use that chart. And I promise you these problems are not going away. They're gonna uh, get a second level of um, difficulty and they, I think they even get to a third level of difficulty. So if you train yourself to use the box now, when you absolutely have to use the box later you'll already know how to use it okay so again I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before I'm gonna write it a little bit different this time okay so this is my distance my rate and my time I don't know what the labels are here but we'll start reading so it says Shonda drove to the mountains last weekend there was heavy traffic on the way there, and the trip took seven hours. When LaShonda drove home, there was no traffic, and the trip took only five hours. If her average rate was 18 miles faster on the trip home, how far away does LaShonda live from the mountains? Okay, so we've got LaShonda's house, we've got this giant mountain, right? And she's gone the trip to the mountains, right? So we've got to the mountains. And then she takes a trip home. So to home. Those are the two different situations that we have going on here, okay? Now it does tell me that there was heavy traffic on the way there and it took her seven hours. So I do know that the, the, uh, the time is seven hours for the trip there. And on the trip back home, there was no traffic, so it only took her five hours. So I do know that this is in hours. Um, and it says that her average rate was 18 miles per hour faster on the trip home. So I don't know how fast she was going on the way to the mountain, but I do know that she should be traveling 18 miles per hour faster, so adding to her speed, on the way home. This is miles per hour, which means distance has to be miles. Since the only box that I'm missing is distance, then I'm going to use that top equation that we had again, this one, um, to figure out how to calculate distance. So if I multiply this, x times 7, I get 7x. If I multiply a binomial times a monomial, each term has to get multiplied by five. So I end up with five X plus 90. So then how do I write an equation? What else do I know? They did tell me something there that helps me, but they didn't say it explicitly. It's just kind of implied considering the scenario. Notice that I said this is the way to the mountain, this is the way back, right? No, 
except that it doesn't matter what direction she's traveling in, the distance would still be the same. The house is not going to move and the mountain's not going to move, right? Um, so they're exactly the same distance. So that means this distance should equal this distance. So my equation becomes 7x equals 5x plus 90. And then if I move my term over to the left side and then divide by 2, I get 45. And x is in the rate column, so that means this is miles per hour. However, I have to be careful because that's not what the question asked me. It did not say how fast was LaShonda traveling. The question was how far way does LaShonda live from the mountains? So that means, although I know what x is, that is not the answer. I need to, since it should be exactly the same, it doesn't matter which one I use, um, I would rather use this one because there's only one step to do and that's to take my x value and multiply it by 7. Or I could have done my x value times 5 and then add 90. You'll still have the same value no matter what. Okay, so what I to do is I'm going to take my 45 and I'm going to multiply it by 7 and the distance will equal 315 miles. Now notice if I would have put it into there, I would still get that same 315 miles. Okay, And so this is the answer that they want, not um, the 45 miles per hour. So you have to be careful. It's, you know, you definitely need to know how to put this in your box. You definitely need to know your units. You need to know what your X represents. Go back to the table and see where the single X was um, to figure that out. And then um, you do have to pay attention to what they're asking for. What bit of information do they want from your solution? So it's a bit of a tricky one here.